After years of censorship, the pendulum has swung back. One of the left's most prominent pillars of control has come crashing down. And now libs are in a full-blown panic. I don't think anyone disagrees it should be a free and open uh, debate or, or platform, mm -hmm. but, I mean, should it be a pl necessarily a font for misinformation and, or to, you know, say uh, mm -hmm. things about people that just aren't true? Elon Musk buying Twitter says a lot about the priorities of people at the highest levels making decisions that could affect the fate of the planet. If you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party? Or are you going to decide to stay home? He can stay home no matter what. <laughs> this is the left coming out of the closet, bearing their soul to the world. This is who we are. We are power-hungry control freaks. That's what they're saying. They can't stand even one company in Silicon Valley breaking away from their iron grip. Elon Musk is promising to end Twitter's censorship campaign. And he even hinted at verifying everybody who's a real person, meaning the so-called journalists would be equal to everybody else on the platform. And that's driving them crazy. They can't be equal. They have to be above. Twitter has been one of their most useful tools for silencing their political opponents like us. But the media can't really come right out and say that. So they went into the old bag of tricks and, you know, pulled out the race card instead. Watch. The right has made multiple attempts to remake Twitter, and it never works because the thing is they don't want to talk to each other. They want to talk to us. They want to talk to the culture. They want to t they, they, if they were where black Twitter was not, they would be sad because they couldn't attack black people. I don't trust Elon Musk to make Twitter better for women at all. He is saying, you get to say whatever you want. For me, that is something that is a bit scary. And I think it's going to be scary to a lot of women. When Elon Musk says, wow, this is about free speech, it seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men. That first guy's hair was amazing, by the way. And as someone with great hair, I have to say that. You know you're on the wrong side of an argument once you start calling free speech racist and sexist. And it's not just liberal pundits crying out about losing control. All of a sudden, the White House really concerned about how much influence big tech holds over us. No matter who owns or runs uh, Twitter, uh, the president has long been concerned about the power of large social media platforms, uh, what they ha the power they have over our everyday lives, has long argued that tech platforms must be held accountable for the harms they cause. So concerned. The big guy was so concerned when Twitter was helping Biden win the election, censoring the laptop. This coordinated attack on Musk now shouldn't be surprising. He's the new bad guy. The left might say Elon's evil because he's a billionaire, but this is what billionaires do. They own media companies. Zuckerberg, he owns Facebook. Bezos owns the Washington Post. He's even hopping on the Musk hate train. Watch. He's saying that this fellow billionaire, Musk, he's helping China by posing this question. He says, did the Chinese government just gain a bit of leverage over the town square? It's just billionaire pissing contest. All this because he's taking his thumb off the scale, Elon? The liberal media never acknowledged Twitter's censorship campaign against conservatives, but now that there's a new guy in charge, they think they'll be the new target. If you own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates all of its nominees, or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else, and the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. That's exactly what the liberals did to conservatives when they ran Twitter. Yeah, and the libs ran Twitter. 98.17% of their employees, employees donated to Democrat candidates last cycle. That army of political operatives inside Twitter drove the war on conservatives, on you, just disguised as a campaign against misinformation and hate speech. Hate speech is just stuff that liberals disagree with.
Let's take a look at who they censored and why. Remember Charlie Kirk and the Babylon Bee? They got suspended for calling a biological man a man. <laughs> then Tucker Carlson was suspended after coming to their defense. They suspended a Chinese virologist who claimed COVID was made in the Wuhan lab. Dr. Robert Malone, an mRNA scientist, was permanently nuked for questioning the vaccine. And Daily Wire co-founder Jeremy Boring made a joke about Brussels sprouts and was knocked off. Libs of TikTok, remember those guys? They were suspended for hateful conduct after bringing attention to videos made by these radical loons. All Libs of TikTok was was a mirror. They just held up a mirror to Libs of TikTok and they got suspended. And the most egregious of all, Twitter silenced the New York Post for the bombshell report on the Biden laptop from hell. You know, the laptop that's now been verified by the New York Times and the Washington Post. You weren't allowed to share or read that report before the election. You know, that was dangerous misinformation, probably from Russia. You remember all the CIA spooks told us that. It aired all the Biden family dirty laundry. If Don Trump Jr. did a slice of that stuff, he would have been toast. Twitter didn't want you to know about the Chinese diamond that they bribed the big guy's son with or the 10% they were holding for the big guy. They didn't want that information spreading. So with one push of a button, poof, millions of Americans, voters, never saw it. And Joe just cruises into the White House. Some would say installed. Now that power is gone, and the left is going to do anything they can to get it back. You think they're going down without a fight? There's already been a bunch of liberals saying they're going to boycott Twitter. Who cares? They're not going anywhere. It's just like the people who said they'd move to Canada when Trump was elected. Instead, they'll spend the next few years smearing the guy trying to make change for the better. Expect to see more coordinated attacks against Musk. He's the new Trump. He's the new Putin, probably. He's going to be in their crosshairs now more than ever. With two big elections coming up, Democrats need a new way to stifle freedom and take control. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.